Good evening, everyone. I'm Laura Ingram. This is the Ingram Angle from Washington tonight. Thank you, as always, for joining us. We're loving it. That's the focus of tonight's angle. Now, even his detractors will concede Donald Trump knows branding. From his hotels to his winery to his golf courses to The Apprentice to his unique style of campaigning for the presidency, he's an original. And he knows how to uh, take his adversary's weakness and then turn it into strength. Now Kamala's narrative is that she's just a regular person. She understands what you're going through because she worked at McDonald's. I'm looking for a job, and I've always wanted to work at McDonald's, but I never did. I'm running against somebody that said she did, but it turned out to be a totally phony story. So if you don't mind, I want to work the French fry counter. Absolutely. Okay, how much so, are you paying me? How much are you paying you? <laughs> <laughs> well, over the weekend at that Pennsylvania McDonald's, Trump punctured the Democrats' central narrative and exposed it as a myth. She's not the woman of the people that she claims to be, but he's a man of the people. Look at oh, that. Mr. Look President. At that. Whoa. How are you? Thank you, Mr. President. Nice to see you. you made it possible for ordinary people like us to meet uh, you. You're not ordinary. I mean, thank you, you so much for everything you do. I can see. We pray for you, uh, and, you. and you are the type of person we want to be the president. Thank you, very thank you so much. So nice. Thank you, nice. for the thank thank you, you. very much. Bye. Now, this wasn't rehearsed. It didn't come across as phony at all, because this is how Trump is when he's speaking one on one with folks. Like, I've seen it so many times over the years, over like 25 years. He respects the value of work, he respects the dignity of jobs from the most menial to the top positions in America. And that came shining through. It requires great expertise, actually. How long have you done this? Uh, eight years. And you're very good at it. Right? I, I appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> never even touch it, huh? Okay. Wow, that's pretty good. Cool. Can I put it right up here on the fryer? Okay, okay sure. Can I give it to these guys here? Take it. Turn it up. Keep it tight. We got the salt on it. Never touches the human hand. Very good. Very nice good. and full. Thank you. Good. Well, this was pure genius. I loved it. And as such, it's just driving the left in the media totally bonkers. There's no logic to it. It's a stunt. He's uh, engaged in some really bizarre types of uh, activities during this campaign. So this is just another one of those uh, stunts. Staging stunts at McDonald's in a desperate attempt to get people to pay attention to his lie that Kamala Harris never worked there. He is so inept at pretending to be a real person that he really literally cannot operate the fry machine as a normal worker. This just shows what an ultimate fraud he is. Jennifer Rubin would rather have the McDonald's be in Ukraine and then should be really happy. Well, they all wear bitter well, don't they? Newsweek questioned if Trump's McDonald's event was staged and then they whined that he didn't work a full shift. Are they kidding me? Do, do they think we thought he was going to like sign up and work there full? First, nothing is stopping Kamala from doing something just like this. After all, she worked at McDonald's, right? So no training's necessary. She already knows the fry machine. I know the fry machine. I worked at McDonald's, and I can prove it. <laughs> but then again, when her campaign tries to capture her in these unofficial settings, the word genuine is not how what I'd use to describe how she comes across. Ah, oh, Dougie, there they are. Yeah, thank you. I know you want this. What do you get? These are. This is my go-to. The original nacho cheese. How is the bait pot going? Oh, no. Well, haven't had it today. <laughs> Well, the truth is, as the election draws to a close, more Americans are seeing who the real champion of the working people is here. And in fact, this isn't the first time Trump has shown appreciation for the working people. Well, I'm going to try doing your job. It's not going to be easy. Don't do it too well. I'll help you with those bags. Look at this, right? You didn't expect this, right? I did not expect this. Take a dog, you go outside, it's freezing, and you walk around for a while, and it's not that easy. Okay, be careful. 
Room service. Look at this. This is serious room service. I hope you give me a nice big fat tip. I like this job, Mia. Oh, then maybe you should come help me all the time. Well, can you picture Kamala doing that? Of course. She's too busy raising a billion dollars from Wall Street and Silicon Valley. According to the New York Times, her campaign and party committees raised a staggering $378 million in September alone, more than double what Trump raised. And while Democrats like to obsess about Elon Musk's support for Trump, he's given away a million dollars at events, the sheer number of billionaires and the mega-rich supporting Harris is very significant. Most donating to the pro-Harris super PAC, Future Forward, are secret. Most of the donors, you don't know who they are. It's called Future Forward. But the ones we do know, according to the Times, include Facebook co-founder Dustin Moskovitz, crypto billionaire Chris Larson, and Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker. And then, this was interesting, there's an undisclosed donor, the biggest donor of all, from another dark money group. Hmm. This all flies in the face of Harris's smears that, you know, Trump only cares about the powerful, she's with the little guy. It's a total lie. She is the candidate of the status quo in the establishment. They do not believe that Trump is the candidate of the billionaires because they have most of the billionaires. And all of their smears, all of the other ones, I really don't believe they believe any of it. There's a presidential nominee running a bizarre, haphazard, R-rated campaign these days. Vulgar comments, crude insults. Donald Trump represents is, is um, in many ways just cruel um, and, and not, um, not the kind of dignity and, and the, the kind of person that, that we all want to be able to look up to. Dignity? Did Liz Cheney say dignity? Now, the party that she's now aligned with is the party of pornography, the party of pot, the party of sex workers, and trans athletes and women's sports. Now, they're all afraid that Trump's language is too coarse or too crude? Of course not. It's another lie. I don't remember any of them being too upset a few weeks ago when we learned that Biden had a very vulgar nickname that he likes to use for President Trump. Now, as you'll see in a moment, there are promising signs that Americans, they're just not buying the Democrats' game of smear and fear. None of it really adds up. It's kind of like the entire Harris Walls campaign. It's fitting that Trump did his deal at McDonald's over the weekend because they used to have this jingle, you deserve a break today. Well, the only way working people will get one is if he wins two weeks from tomorrow. And that's the angle. Nothing screams Americana like a gentleman behind a counter in shirt sleeves, a tie, and an apron. It's the kind of old school shopkeeper look you used to see on the local grocer. That look meant service you could trust. Good old-fashioned mom-and-pop professionalism captured by Norman Rockwell. It made you feel all warm and fuzzy inside. This weekend, Trump swapped out his suit jacket for an apron and clocked into a shift at McDonald's. My first day at McDonald's, I'm looking for a job. Okay. Yes, we got And then out the oil. See? back into the oil. Very nice. Let's do it. Very good. And then you can hang that one right back over there. Thank you. Salt first. And then just one dump. No movement. Good, good, good. Right over. Never touched by a human hand. Nice and clean. Of course, my hands are nice and clean. <laughs> This guy's a good instructor. I appreciate it. Wow. I'm going to give a really big one so that, look at that, they're good. just pouring out of there. <laughs> How good is that? Donald at McDonald's. It's as American as apple pie. And they have those there, too. They're good. The blonde hair, the red tie, matching the golden arches and the box of fries. And then he started working the drive-thru.
And there'll be no charge Trump is paying for it. Is that okay? Oh, you're doing it some extra stuff. Oh, okay, great. This is, this is all on Trump. Oh, all on Trump. I'm allowed to do that, right? Yeah. Huh? Let's check and make sure it's okay. everything you said it would be. It better be. It's going to be the best you ever. I made it myself. This is fun. I could do this all day. I wouldn't mind this job. I like this job. I think I might come back and do it again. Thank you. Look at that. Oh, Look at that. Oh, how are you? Thank you, Mr. President. Nice to see you. Thank Hi, you. darling. How are you? You made it possible for ordinary people like us to meet. Oh, uh, you're not ordinary. I mean, no, this is compliments of Trump, okay? Yes, thank okay, you. Okay, Mr. President, yes. please don't let the United States become Brazil, my native Brazil. Uh, we're going to make it better than ever, okay? A photo is worth a thousand words, but in politics, could be worth a million votes. Because this image at a Pennsylvania McDonald's was taken not far from another iconic moment in Butler. Fight, fight, fight. And the other in a Fulton County jail. The three most powerful images of the election, all of one man, now seared into the American psyche like a sizzling quarter pounder and branded like a steer into the American culture, certifying the 2024 election as the most mesmerizing race of our lifetime. There's something aristocratic about a billionaire president taking your order at a fast food drive through He kept his tie on, his cufflinks on, didn't pretend to be middle class like most politicians. What made it even more authentic is that Trump has a middle class palate. No one likes McDonald's more than 45. There's also something artistic. It reminds you of an Andy Warhol painting, like political pop art embracing mass marketing and a great American brand. Trump has completely identified himself as America. Good luck running against America. Andy Warhol once said, quote, I've always thought that the president could do so much here to help change images. If the president would go into a public bathroom in the Capitol and have the TV cameras film him cleaning the toilets and saying, why not? Somebody's got to do it then that would do so much for the morale of the people who do the wonderful job of keeping the toilets clean. This humble display of affection for Happy Meals and the tilt of the cap to the American work ethic was also done with a wink to our dear lady Kamala, who claimed to have worked at McDonald's without any evidence. Mr. President, you actually have worked at McDonald's now. This is, uh... Now I have worked at McDonald's. I've now worked for 15 minutes more than Kamala. Are you going to put this on your resume? I never worked here. Well, Why I would she lie about something like that? Dollars. Will it be put on your resume? I worked at McDonald's. Why there would she go. lie about that? Why did, because she's lying Kamala, that's why. One candidate served fries, the other served lies. Hmm. McDonald's confirms that they have no record of Harris ever working there. So we're just going to have to take her word for it because Kamala Harris never lies about anything. Breaking news, Rick Grinnell says 51 intel agents say Kamala definitely did work at McDonald's. <laughs> McDonald's even invited Kamala to flip some burgers, too, but she hasn't shown up. Donald Trump respects the taste of the American people. Kamala Harris doesn't. She says she knows better. Drive this car, don't watch this show. You're racist if you like borders. She thinks Trump's crazy for listening to music at a rally. Kamala's no fun, is she? Maybe she used to be, but not anymore. They want to throw Trump in jail again. Trump also stopped by a McDonald's in Bucks County today, where he worked briefly as a fry cooker. Without a hairnet, I might add. He also said he was paying for some of the meals. How is that not a campaign finance violation? Campaign finance violation. Kamala is giving black guys $20,000 welfare checks. Biden bribing college grads, paying off their loans. But Trump picks up a guy's Big Mac and they want to press charges? 94 counts for 94 fries. And without a hairnet, I might add. Jonathan, do you hear yourself? Brian Stelter for... Security reasons, Trump's McDonald's visit was carefully staged ahead of time with drive through customers selected and screened by Secret Service. Yeah, really? You think Trump's driving through Pennsylvania and just saw McDonald's and said, pull over, I'm hitting the kitchen. What's more staged, Trump working the drive through at Mickey D's or the entire Biden presidency? 
He got a cheat sheet every press conference. They built a fake White House set for him. You want to see stage? I'll show you stage. Look at Nancy and Chuck in their African tribal attire on their knees at the Capitol. Remember that? Look at Schumer grilling up burgers. Slab of cheese on the raw patty. Kamala can't even buy Doritos without staging it. Ah, oh, Dougie, there they are. Yeah, thank you. I know you want those. Oh. Can you see corn nuts over there, Isn't this it? Oh, uh, yeah, that's, oh, that's yeah. the best. There you go. <laughs> Scintillating. Kamala got caught staging a town hall just an hour ago. Watch. You're not, unfortunately. We have some predetermined uh, questions, and I hopefully I'll be able to ask some of the questions that might be in your head. I hope so. Everyone in Kamala's town hall is a prop who's supposed to keep their mouth shut and leave the questions to consultants. Kamala has a problem with men, right? So why isn't she talking to them? Why isn't Harris at a football game? Howard University, her alma mater. Big game this Saturday against Norfolk State. Young men watch Saturday Night Live. When's Harris doing a cameo, huh? The truth is that Kamala's written men off, and she farmed half the population out to little Timmy and her husband, Doug. Meanwhile, Trump's up in the barber shops. You have all this, you know, equipment, and all of that electric equipment that he's using on your beautiful head of hair. You have a good-looking head of hair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm jealous. Look at that flat top. I'd have a flat top. <laughs> I wish I had a flat top. You never had, you never had a hair loss problem, no. did you? <laughs> it's lucky. He's one of those uh, gifted ones. Right? So last night after McDonald's, Trump was in Pittsburgh watching the Steelers-Jets game. November 3rd, Lions-Packers, games in Green Bay. Harris can go watch from a suite. Tom Brady's announcing. Go swing by for a pick. Why am I even giving her advice? It's so obvious. The WNBA Finals just ended. It went to five games. How many games did Kamala attend? Zero. It was even New York versus Minnesota. Her running mates from Minnesota. The guys, they could have gone together. What's wrong with her? <laughs> All she does is just criticize Trump. What was she doing this weekend while Trump was slinging nuggets and watching football? She threw herself a celebrity birthday party. Happy birthday, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy, happy birthday to you. I mean, if Stevie could have seen Trump at the drive-thru, you know he'd be voting for Republicans. Kamala has Stevie. Trump has Antonio Brown, the former All-Pro wideout from Pittsburgh, is registering voters at the tailgate Sunday. I know the media is going to call me crazy, me and Trump crazy for having me speaking here, but I want to make this clear. We are not. They are. <laughs> you know, Kamala Harris and Tim Watts, do you really know they want to put tampons in the boys' bathroom. Is that crazy? <laughs> Democrats are now saying if black men don't vote for Kamala, they're not getting lucky. Hello, ladies. I'm Trey. It's good to be here. What do you do and how much do you make? I work in finance, making six figures. How tall are you? Six five. Do you have a plan to vote in November? Nah, not my thing. If women start using sex as a bargaining chip, Kamala's going to win in a landslide. If women go on a sex strike before this election, I might vote for Kamala. Let's not get carried away here, ladies. Where's the joy? I thought politics was supposed to be fun. The Undertaker gets it. You need to show more of this part of you. Because I really think, you know, you're, you're a guy's guy and a sports fan. And I just... I know you got to have that. I know you got that tough, tough guy persona and that bravado. But I think, uh, you know, th this, this is good. This is fun. And I think, you, you know what you've done? 
You, you, you've made politics fun again. Kamala's closing message is about Trump. Trump's closing message is about you, and it's working. The polls are all tied in the swing states, with Trump having a slim edge and the momentum. CNN says Harris is stalled. I think there are a lot of folks, such as myself, who think that Donald Trump's unpopularity is baked in. But here's the deal. If you believe that Donald Trump has somehow become less popular over time, let me change your mind about that. In fact, he is more popular at this point in the campaign than he was at this point in the 2020 campaign or the 2016 campaign. Kamala's campaign's nitpicking Donald about hairnets, his playlist, and Arnold Palmer jokes. Calling Trump unfit and exhausted at this point's weak sauce after he's survived raids, arrests, and bullets. Harris is in the home stretch. She smacks of desperation. Dave Bossie says these are not the moves of a successful candidate with momentum in the last weeks of a campaign. These are the pathetic decisions of an army of Washington insiders wondering if they should have just stuck with President Biden after all. Kamala is now in the same place Hillary was. She's unrelatable and angry. She even sounds like Hillary. I am sick and tired of the negative, dark, divisive, dangerous vision and behavior of of people who support Donald Trump. It is time for us to say no. We are not going backwards. We're going forward. I think Kamala is just jealous that Trump looked better in an apron. Who wore it better? With just 15 days to go, we have officially entered the closing argument phase of this presidential election year, and the message from each campaign could not be any more different. Former President Donald Trump focused like a laser on bringing down costs, bringing down crime, securing the border, becoming energy dominant, making the world a safer place for all. In other words... He's promising to clean up the mess caused by Joe and Kamala Harris. But this isn't a negative campaign. Every single day, he's on the ground connecting with Americans from all walks of life. I love this. Over the weekend, Donald Trump got down to business at a local McDonald's outside of Philadelphia, where he worked the fry machine, handed out food at the drive-thru, talked to people, and uh, he looked like he was having a good time. I see a lot of joy in this. Take a look. I'm looking for a job. And I've always wanted to work at McDonald's, but I never did. I'm running against somebody that said she did, but it turned out to be a totally phony story. Turn it up. Keep it tight. We got the salt on it. Never touches the human hand. Very good. Very nice good. and full. Thank you. Good. This is all on Trump. Oh, I'm allowed to do that, right? Yeah. Uh, Let's check and make sure it's everything you said it would be. It better be. It's going to be the best year, but I made it myself. Now I have worked at McDonald's. I've now worked for 15 minutes more than Kamala. Now, the funny part is, if you know Donald Trump in real life, and I've known him way before he ever ran for president, he does love McDonald's. Uh, So do I. Anyway, no scripts, no teleprompter. A tie, an apron, a frying machine. Trump got to meet workers, talk to supporters, poke some fun at Kamala Harris, and the people of Pennsylvania, they were really happy to see him. Take a look. And then on Sunday night, he headed all across the state to Pittsburgh for a sold-out primetime Steelers game where the crowd broke out into very loud chants of USA. Take a look. 45th president of the United States, Donald Trump, in attendance tonight, invited guest of one of the suite holders here at Acrisure Stadium. USA! And on the ground, the enthusiasm was also very real. And our very own Sarah Carter caught up with tailgaters. And here's what they had to say about the upcoming election. Take a look. Pennsylvania is the big state, right? I mean, this is everybody's got eyes on Pennsylvania. What is your feeling based on what you're seeing? I'm seeing that Trump's going to win it, but I don't know. Let's go, Trump. (laughs) What's the main reason why you are supporting President Trump? Me personally, the border. Tell me, what, what's the one thing about President Trump that... That I like? Yeah. His, his boldness. I'm a bold person. I don't sugarcoat nothing. I, that's what I like about him. Any message you got for President Trump? Go get the win. 
Go get the win. We got win his the back. election. Come on. We yep. got his back. Yep. George Pickens touchdown. President Trump win. Put it in a parlay. A thousand dollars. Whatever you got. I know what I want to happen. President Trump back in office. This is a state that's going to make or break this election. How are you feeling about it? You know what we're doing? Winning. Winning. You know why we're winning? Policy. It's all about policy, right? It's about what he says and what he does, and he backs it up, and he's going to do the same damn thing when he wins the election again. Gotta love the people of Pittsburgh. This morning, only a few hours after the game, Trump headed back to North Carolina to get an update on recovery efforts, talk to the victims of Hurricane Helene, where many people lost everything, and Joe and Kamala, of course, their preparation response, maybe the worst in hurricane history. In contrast, Kamala Harris was uh, campaigning on stage with Madam Joy herself, the ever so dour, the perpetually angry Liz Cheney. And just a quick reminder for Liz Cheney, because maybe she thinks that Democrats, maybe she believes in her heart that they like her. And maybe she believes that she has a new home in the Democratic Party. Uh, Liz, let me burst the bubble. No, they hate you. And they've always hated you and your family. They called your father a war criminal, evil, every other nasty name they could think of. They accused him of corruption with his work with Halliburton. And Democrats are just simply using Liz Cheney and have been for years. They don't agree with Cheney's beliefs and policies, and they don't trust her. And Liz Cheney's hatred of Donald Trump has caused her to completely abandon every stated belief she's ever had on both economic and foreign policy. Now, Kamala's closing message, it's not about beliefs. It's not about policies, as that, that last person told Sarah Carter. It's not about her track record, because she can't run on whether or not this country is better off than we were four years ago, because, for a very simple reason, by every measure, we are far worse off. The border is not secure. It's become the biggest national security crisis uh, probably in our country's history, and it's self-inflicted. Prices on everything you buy and every store you go to are up dramatically. Crime is up dramatically, and our country and the world is not a safer place. Are you better off than you were four years ago? For most Americans, they're going to answer overwhelmingly no. Kamala can't ask that question or run on that position. Her position is on raising taxes, defund, dismantle, reimagine police and ICE and getting rid of ICE and decriminalizing illegal immigration and offering everything for free to illegals, in, uh, including sex change operations if they want it, eliminating private health insurance, government health care for all, and banning fracking and drilling. You know, all of her core values are extreme. They are radical. If implemented, we won't recognize the United States of America as we know it today. And so her closing argument, with the help of the ever-so-happy Liz Cheney and the state-run media mob, Donald Trump is a monster. Or as The Atlantic put it, quote, Donald Trump is speaking like Hitler, Stalin, and Mussolini. The joy is gone. Kamala's coronation is not going according to plan. So now, as Miranda Devine so eloquently wrote in the New York Post, Dems are so fearful, they're now in the Trump is worse than Hitler stage as election day nears. I wish I wrote it that eloquently myself. Now, the cries of racism and sexism and xenophobia and transphobia, homophobia are reaching a fever pitch. Oh, and Republicans want dirty air and water, and they want to take grandma and grandpa's Social Security away. Others are accusing Trump of wanting to overthrow democracy and arrest his enemies. Uh, this from a Democratic Party that waged the silent coup against Joe Biden after he won the primary by millions and millions and millions of votes, and then installed Kamala Harris as the party's nominee after they threatened to use the 25th Amendment to push Joe out, and she received herself zero votes. Democrats have another backup plan, though. If their attacks on Trump fall flat, they'll send out celebrities. They've been sending out, let's see, the Clintons, the Obamas, and Gretchen Whitmer. Not working too well. The Obamas had to leave their Martha's Vineyard mansion to scold the American people, specifically, quote, the brothers, uh, about being, quote, sexist, and they're making big promises. But they can't hide from a simple truth. For the past three and a half years, crime, inflation, has strained businesses and every American in every corner of our country. So while Kamala and her celebrity friends vilify Donald Trump and compare him to Hitler and Stalin and Mussolini, et cetera, 
the former presidents on the ground talking to Americans, including recently when Trump visited a barbershop in the Bronx in New York with Lawrence Jones. Take a look. Do you believe at some point in time we could find a way once the country's back on its feet and getting enough revenue and paid off our debt? Do you yeah. think it's possible to find a way to eliminate federal taxes? For there is a way. And, there is and, a and way. How do you feel about You know, in the old days, when we were smart, when we were a smart country, in the 1890s and all, this, this is when the country was relatively the richest it ever was. It had all tariffs. It didn't have an income tax. Yes, sir. Okay? Now we have income taxes, and we have people that are dying. They're paying tax and they don't have the money to pay the tax. No. In the old days, 1890, 1880, we had so much money, they had to set up committees, blue ribbon committees, how to spend our wealth. We had no idea how to spend it with so much money. Then we went to the income tax system and the rest is sort of history. But uh, no, there is a way. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.